Hi guys, welcome to my new YouTube channel. I'm Lini aka Polygonia and in this space I want to show you some producing hacks, some details about my artistic path and let's see what comes up along the way, maybe some design hacks. Uh, yeah, we will see. Um, in this video I want to show you some details about my production of my recent track Yunua. This track I produced for a compilation which came out on my own label Keone. Um, it is actually part of a whole release series called Glyphs. For this one I chose the material wood because it's, it's a concept based release series and I want each artist of the compilations to interpret or translate the material or substance of the compilation into the musical language which means in this case I translated the material wood with all its details and things which I think about it into music and yeah let's jump right into it I hope you like it and yeah all right so here we are in the studio now I want to show you step by step how my project looks like. As you can see here I have some groups. One is the bass group and then you have we have drums and then we also have some oh let me see here atmospheres and fills. So first of all um, don't get confused by the number of tracks as it only exists because I worked a lot with samples. Um, I recorded the samples in mono and to make them stereo I had to duplicate this, uh, the tracks. So it's more like maybe 25 tracks in total or something like that. Um, yeah, let's start with the bass section. Um, I, I will give you one glimpse into how the track sounds in general if you haven't heard it yet. So let's let's dive right into it. Alright, so it's a quite woody yet synthesized track in a way. And yeah, let's start with the bass section. As you can see here, I have a, a breakbeat kick. I wanted to do a very dubby track and therefore I added several bass counter kicks, uh, like those bass bumps here. But together with the kick it sounds like that. Yeah, and actually it's pretty basic. I used the kick too for the main kick and also for all the bass bumps. I really like this kick synthesizer as this is very fastly tweaked with uh, the pitch curve and the amp curve. I barely use the clicks actually and also barely use those things here below, but uh, they can come in handy sometimes. And yeah, I basically just duplicated uh, the kick track here and placed one hit once at a time at a very yeah fitting space in the beat to make it sound more exciting and uh, as if the kick had more velocity in different perspectives, angles from which you see the kick. And uh, as they are counter kicks, they don't really define the main groove but they give some kind of spice to the to the whole groove and i think it's cool to also not al always work with bass lines which are like just filling the whole space up in the bass section but use some bass elements which are quite short and just giving some impulses and some nice additions to the groove and that's what i did basically right here and looking at this this is also bass bump, so this one, for example, this isn't a real bass bump, but I also did this with a kick too. Um, I lengthened the whole note or the whole envelope so that it gets this tone and uh, put some, like, for example, he here the devastor, it's a uh, distortion, which is quite nice. 
and very clean and I also added the amp um, and yeah I, I subtracted all the, the, the shit here on top which I don't need in my mix and yeah also I added one little other bass line here and uh, this one I did with a square wave, with a pure square wa wave, very basic actually. I just pushed the high frequencies, maybe not the most clean way to, to do it in the um, sound engineering realm, but I wanted to do it quick, um, so I, I handled it like this. Normally you should just um, lower the low frequencies and not push anything, just make it louder, then you would protect the face of the signal in general but uh, yeah well I just didn't care and I also added this um, envelope here the filter envelope and also the pitch curve if we wouldn't have this it would sound like that so with the filter it's like that and then the pitch envelope yeah adds a little bit more spice all right so that was it uh, for this bass section here I added uh, this little udu sample to 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 yeah spice up the groove a little bit more. See, it's it's just not really a main element, but it's cool to 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 support the groove nicely then here uh, this is a classic snare i'm doing quite often not al always in the same way but uh, with the same root of way i would say um, in this case i did it with white noise like always actually also my hi-hats and added a little bit of tonality with the sine tone here just a little little bit um, when you hear it without those two things here you wouldn't really recognize it actually but when you turn up the drum bus uh, you will actually see that there is some tonality inside so this is the snare now you can see and um, yeah what I did basically is that I added this EQ which cuts away um, the frequencies I don't want to have or boosts the frequencies which I want to have more and the drum bus is mo the most important effect here because it pushes a lot the frequencies all over and gives it an own character in the timbre in the end and that's what I like a lot about the drum bus it's not only cool and clean for drums but it also has an own character and that's why I'm using it quite often um, without those two it sounds like that and then with the EQ now with the drum bus yeah and now it's proper snare, very dry, but proper snare. So let's see here about the hi-hats. Ah, yeah. I used a hi-hat sample in this case. Um, I added some little modulation with this phaser flanger in the range of uh, 2.49 kilohertz. And uh, yeah, I do it very often. As you can see, the dry wet is not really there it's only 25% wet and like that you you just add a little bit of movement which is nice sometimes uh, I also added a, a little bit of movement with the auto filter um, LFO amount um, the people always ask me how my so uh, stuff sounds so organically and I can just only give one answer it's just because of a lot of modulation sometimes very sub subtle sometimes very strong and here this is a uh, example for a very very subtle um, modulation and organicness but this can be increased of course um, so and then this is also like this is a limiter and uh, yeah, in 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 dynamic EQ, both very nice actually. I can in general really um, recommend Tokyo Dawn Records is the name of this company. They are Munich based actually, which is pretty cool, <laughs> as I'm from there. 
And uh, yeah, they, they are very useful tools, um, especially the limiter. But also this one, it's it's amazing. I can really, really, really uh, recommend those two to work in a very clean and uh, they do a lot to push your signal and uh, it's very clean and not much like uh, exquisite stuff, but very cool. All right, so the next one is uh, the delay. I work with delays a lot actually um, to to um, add some things to the rhythm or make it sound more natural as if a person would play this percussion instrument, in this case the hi-hat. Without the de delay it sounds like that. Oh. It's a little bit for lazy people, the delay, <laughs> I would say. If you want to work fast and add some natural character to your groove at this delay don't uh, as you can see the feedback is very low and the dry wet is even a bit high uh, as i think right now but um but, but as you can see like uh, the impulses which the delay adds are more quiet which is why it seems like if it was used with velocity, with lower velocity as the other hits. I think it's a very good trick to 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 do stuff. And yes, yeah, and also here, um, what I always use for arrangement is um, this one for the utility. As as I uh, recognize right now, I put this I had here as well, but I actually didn't activate it. So yeah, well, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I always use the utility for uh, utility for arrangement instead of uh, this one, uh, the mixer gain, because I think this gain should really be only for mixing and not for arranging. If you automate this and you have like different levels, it will be so difficult to autom to to always adjust the mixing. You can hear right now. You can just do it very quickly and nothing gets broken. If you uh, would do it here, for example, which could be equivalent to this one, you will destroy everything and then have to reactivate the the arrangement and stuff like that. This is very annoying. So it's great to to split the arrangement steps from the mixing steps. I think it's very, very important. And what I use very often for arrangement, uh, arranging t uh, stuff as well is the filter, of course. Um, it makes sense, I guess. Uh, now this... Ah, yeah, here this is uh, a shaker which I uh, created out of a sample which I recorded with this one. Wait a sec, I will hope... Uh, here... This is what I used mostly for for the wooden samples I used. So I think no, maybe I think this was uh, the sound which I recorded for this shaker. And um, and as you can see here, I. Also EQ'd the signal to get what I wanted from the frequencies. Then I had to push <laughs> the gain a lot because I recorded it too quietly. I actually recorded several sounds and then uh, this was a sound in between which also fitted. So it was more like a coincidence. And here I added an envelope which I painted <laughs> with the automation curve. I think it's a very funny way sometimes to create rhythms in an out-of-the-box thinking kind of way. Um, you can do it in a various ways to achieve this solution, I think. But like that, sometimes it feels like another perspective on a signal, which is why I like to also draw those automation curves as envelopes. And also here I added this delay. Yeah, as you can see, it also adds something to the groove again and makes it more interesting. And again, I arranged with the auto filter and utility. This is also a hi-hat, which I used again with the phaser, flanger, auto filter, 
again, limiter, uh, dynamic EQ, and this I didn't use in the end, so it could be get deleted actually. And again, with a delay. Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> um, next one, another. Yeah, this is also done like the, the other one actually. It's also the same sample, I think. As you can see, I got more crazy here. Sometimes it feels for me to p uh, paint these or draw these automation lines like it doesn't feel like playing an instrument. But as I know how envelopes can be shaped uh, with wind instruments or string instruments, for example, it's more versatile how you play it. You know, the envelopes can change from time to time very fast and um, each note can play be played inv individually. Individually. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and in this case uh, of electronic music, sometimes it's a little bit annoying to program envelopes like this with like, like all kinds of um, envelope followers and stuff like that, you know, like... You can do so many things in the digital realm. But sometimes it feels just more natural to me to really see how the envelope is shaped when being played. And like this, I can really understand what's being played at that moment and make it feel more natural in tweaking when I'm like changing a little bit uh, the uh, with the points the dots uh, to to achieve a very natural feeling all right what do you have here yeah and this is basically all here you see the drum bus and um, what I said previously is that I recorded some drum samples in um, in mono and here is what I did with them. I, I really put them in big stereo now. Um, it's all the same sample, I think. But uh, what I did is that I slightly... Let me see. Can we see it here? I ah, know it's a different sample, actually. It's not the same. Yeah, and that's why it works, because I have different tricks, several tricks for making things stereo, but in this case, it was not necessary to do something like, like this. I just panned it uh, 27 to the left, 27 to the right, and also here, same. Yeah, it's a higher version of the signal. Yeah, and it all together, it sounds like that. And as you can see on the um, goniometer, it uh, fills the stereo in a very, very lovely kind of way. So much better than mono. I can really also recommend it so much to all the analog producers out there because I can hear so fast if something is analog, not because of the sound design, because I think this is nothing you can really distinguish. But what you can really hear is that mono uh, analog producers are so often producing in mono. And actually, I think um, it really misses some kind of depth because it's... 2D instead of 3D. What is, you understand what I mean? And if you just take the same signal and just go one step into your door and um, duplicate the signal and maybe just pitch it a little bit left and right, like only one cent or something, and then like uh, pen it left and right, then you will already have such a nice stereo. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's really easy and it doesn't have to be produced in the box, but only the stereo effect is amazing to do to do this, actually. All right, so next up would be another uh, wooden percussion. Yeah, same thing here. I think I don't really have to um, explain much here. Uh, as you can see, it's always the same cooking receipt. Very, very fast and clean. Um, I don't really, I really li like raw signals um, when the signal itself is good. Um, so that you think it's some, like, a lot of stuff happened with it, but it actually didn't. All right. And this is my main element in this track. So let's, let's jump into it. Um, my main element in this track is... Um, should 
was supposed to have the function to either have a very wooden character, but also break out of this wooden character. So I created this very, in the beginning, it sounds like a wooden stick, which hits any kind of surface. But it's actually FM synthesis. Also here, as you can see, I also used uh, the delays to um, add some little spice to the groove. I also um, added various effects, but not too many. I think the most sound changing effect might be the redux and the spectral time actually. Um, and yeah, I, the spectral time I also only used yeah, only used in this, those parts. So uh, the most of the things which you can hear happening with the sound happens actually in the synthesis. So as you can see, it's only two sine tones. And uh, those sine tones are stacked here. You can always check here how the algorithms look like. And I chose this one. Um, it doesn't really make sense. You can also achieve it with this. It's basically the same um, as only I as I only have two oscillators activated and not four. As you as you can also recognize, I tried to have more, but it doesn't didn't really make sense. So without the second oscillator, it sounds like that. When you add this the, through the algorithm, it will happen that. It changes more woody. Uh, it sounds more woody. And then I also automated the de de attack decay of the main oscillator, but also of the second oscillator, and uh, and then also the time. So this, those are the different facets with my uh, which my synth has. And what you can also already grasp is that I love to do my automations while just playing, you know. I don't produce with hardware, I only produce with uh, the PC, but what I really want to do is do the automation while the track plays, which I do with the mouse right here in this case. I always press shift and then you are able to really finely change the parameter you're doing. When you don't press shift, it will be all over the place. But if you do, you can do little things like this. And then while playing the track, it feels more natural if you really do it live, you know. All right. And um, yeah, that's the main element. Yeah, and also this one I actually panned to the left and right and I think what I did a little bit is, yeah, I only changed one little detail and it's the pitch of the second oscillator. Here, only two cents. But like that, you can make sure that the face of each of those two operators is a little bit different. And therefore it will sound like stereo. If this face is the same, then it will sound mono because you're just duplicating the same signal and it's left and right, but it will actually sound like mono again. And all right, uh, next element, what do we have here? This is not even turned on, so let's not speak about it. Um, here, we have the atmospheres. Yeah. Here, for example, let us listen to the signal without the effects change. Okay, it's, just, it's also uh, the same sample as the other one for the shakers. But the main effect here is the vocoder, which added some specific kind of noise sound to the signal, uh, so that it doesn't sound again like the others. And uh, yeah, 
basically some delay, auto pan, automation with the LFO here, making the LFO rate going faster and slower. And that's it basically again. And here, what do we have here? Ah, yeah, that's the wood atmosphere. I really, really love the pitch loop. Um, for everybody who doesn't know it, uh, re you really should try it. Robert Henke played a whole live set with only this effect because it's so amazing. It's kind of a delay, but a very special delay. So check it out. It's worth it, definitely. Um, filter delay, again, delay, 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 delay. <laughs> wow. All right. And here, the noise. Yeah, this is a very classic noise, uh, what, I, what I like to do, um, to add some like uh, windy feeling to the track maybe. And it's always, uh, I love to make it feel more organic also, as if somebody is doing something, right? Not, not like a machine doing it, but sounding kind of human or organic. And for that I always click on random for the curve and activate jitter and smooth. And then you see those movements um, happening here. And uh, yeah, it, it had, adds an uh, organic character to the whole signal. And uh, then what do we have here? The fills. I love fills. I think you might know it if you know my sound. <laughs> um, yeah, those are also, um, as I have shown, these I have like three of them. I, I bought them extra for the track and um, recorded some stuff. Yeah, I think, oh, oh shit. I think it sounds very nice. Um, so it has a very nice resonance. Yeah, it's very raw. So I didn't really process it that much. And it's adding some stuff to the rhythm. Yeah. I think since the resonance of this wooden device is so high, I also really love that um, it has a tonality, which is really cool, especially for this sample here. And here now, let's see. Yeah, also something like that again. I just recorded several things. <laughs> Again, but I reversed something which I recorded. And then here. Yeah, here for example I did a little bit more. Yeah, so what you should definitely look into if you don't know it yet is the warp mode possibility in Ableton for the samples. It's amazing. Here in this case I pitched the sample up with 20 sense and uh, semitones I mean sorry and I turned on tones and increased the gain size to 100 and uh, then it sounds like that if I do for example texture it sounds different again it sounds different as well you can really do interesting uh, textures with this uh, stuff then I distorted it a little bit with the drum bus. I added some modulation here with the amount of the auto filter. And then, yeah, here pretty intense phaser flanger stuff. Three differently set up phasers. Um, I really love this effect. I use it in so many productions of mine because all, this, uh, all the results sound very, very organic. When I turn it off, sounds cool also, but like that. It gets a watery, watery feel, you see. And then, yeah, a delay again, echo. Yeah, and here, without the pitch loop, it's only that. But the pitch loop adds those interesting echoes. And then here, what do we have here? Yeah, only one hit. Yeah, and that's basically the track now. So 
So my producing process is always very simple as I always know what I want to achieve and then I can reach it with very few steps only, which makes the whole thing really enjoyable, I think. I don't need so much time to produce one track as um, I also don't have it. Um, for those who follow my project, um, I'm just putting out so much music, it's just impossible to spend several days on one track um, I'm also receiving many requests and I'm really bad at saying no so uh, yeah I'm producing all the time basically and um, as you can see you can really use very very simple tricks and get a very complex and rich sounding um, result in the end and yeah that's my philosophy basically for producing and I hope you enjoyed <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to hit the like button and ring the bell. And let me know if you have any questions, comments or wishes for next videos I'm gonna do on this channel. If you have any specific topics you wanna hear about, then feel free to ask. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and see you next time.